Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the As Seen on TV podcast for The Vampire Diaries, Season 7, Episode 11, Things We Lost in the Fire. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me from the couch are Dom. Hi. And Nikki. Hi. And joining us from not the couch is Kim. Hi. 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 So what's going on? Chilling. Mm-hmm. Chilling. Yeah. Not like Damon. He was not very chilling this episode. Mm-mm. On mm. that note, neither was Stefan. Neither was Elena. <laughs> neither <laughs> was Elena. Fire. Oh my god. She oh she's so hot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we'll get to that in Sick due course. Work. Ah. Uh, what you did there? <laughs> Where did Nikki go? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Great start. <laughs> what was also a great start is this episode, which picks up right the second where last one left off, where we were questioning, oh, was that real? Is Damon still in the, you know, the Phoenix Stone? That was another hallucination. Moving on. No, it wasn't. It was real. Or was it? That's another good question. We'll find <laughs> out six episodes from now that it all was fake. I'm telling you right now, this show is not going to be able to do anything. Anything from here on out, whether... It, it, all the way up into the last episode, I'm still going to be questioning whether or not they're still in the Phoenix Stone. Yeah, you know, it, especially with the whole three-year flash-forward stuff looming and, in you know, on the horizon, what if at the season finale, the whole three-year flash-forward was still one of them stuck in the Phoenix Stone? It could be. Sure. Why not? It, it, the series finale could be them getting out of the Phoenix Stone. <laughs> yeah. And then Sam and Dean show up. Put their heads off. Uh, Fucking Winchesters. You they know it's gonna be a, like an extra reel or a blooper or some weird thing that they're gonna do. <laughs> Cause you're probably gonna, like, they're not gonna ever put it in the actual show, but it's oh, gonna. No. Help. I don't know about that. I mean, the CW. They could pull it off on Supernatural and be completely fine. I I don't think they could do it on Vampire Diaries. Yeah. They could pull it off on Supernatural yeah. without an issue. Because, yeah, Supernatural still has that comedy aspect to it. Oh, yeah. All right, so, um... Damon's out. He really did break, stab, and smash all of his friends. Mm-hmm. Supposedly. Allegedly. Which, he, yes, he then... You know, heals Bonnie, heals Matt, gets stabbed by Caroline. Good times. Mm-hmm. Not for them. No, not no. for them. So the whole plan here is Stefan's got him chained up, and it is Stefan's plan to help Damon cope with his post-hell hallucinations that he knows he's going to have, because Stefan, he himself, had had some hallucinations. Stefan's didn't seem nearly as bad. No, I mean, they were bad for him. His his thing was to let his brother go. That's it. Right, but I mean, that's as just of a big deal for Stefan. Yeah, but, for Stefan, that is a big deal. But for Stefan, it's let your brother go. He's dragging you down. And for Damon, it's you should have loved your mom. You should never have let her go. Right. Now, I agree that Stefan seemed kind of lame compared, that he got off easy, but look at the, you know, putting the two hells side by side. Every day, Stefan wound up in the quarry, drowning with his brother. That was what he looked forward to waking up to every day. Damon seemed like, you know, a buddy comedy by comparison. Mm. He wakes up every day to his war buddy, and... It, you know, it played out. 
Yeah, exactly. It played out differently every day for Damon. It was, you know, he didn't wake up immediately underwater drowning. Right. You got to remember that, I mean, obviously both hells actually happened. The, yeah. These, these yeah. incidents did really happen. Allegedly. We're going to remember that Stefan actually did drown continuously for, how long do we remember how long he was in the trunk for? A couple months, was it? Weeks, they said. They didn't say an exact time. They just said weeks. But like, that was like the worst thing for him was, was just drowning over and over and over and living with everything he, in his head. So he was just reliving that nightmare over and over and over. I mean, he was stuck in a box and he was put in that quarry at one time and he just drowned yeah. over and over and over. What was that, two seasons ago? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean... That is a hell, because he's already experienced it. Yeah. Very true. So now they're just adding this concept of him continuously trying to, what it has been for, you know, all of the seasons, to save his brother from himself. And, yeah, the only way to get past that is to let his brother go, which was his way out of hell. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> But um, getting out of hell, Steph, it didn't really all end because Stefan was still, excuse me, hallucinating Damon wherever he went. Because he's still in the stone. There's that. Um, it's 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 post. It, PTSD. It's, <laughs> I mean, Damon comes in, you know, says a couple of like really, you know, sarcastic and really shitty things to Stefan, and it's like, oh wait, you're not my brother. You're a waiter. You were bringing us bread. <laughs> I find it, I mean, that was way before Damon got out of the stone, correct? It was, yeah. Yeah. Like, soon after Stefan had gotten out. And so allegedly. Was, uh, yes, allegedly. And he offered her wine, and then she's like, no, I'm just going to have water. And you kind of saw him flinch, like, oh god, water. <laughs> and then he was like, oh yeah, I know, I know why you can't have wine. Oh yeah, you're, you're pregnant, duh. Yeah. Duh. But, he was more scared of the whole water thing than, oh yeah, you're pregnant. You shouldn't drink. Water's my trigger! <laughs> Water's my trigger. <laughs> uh, every time it, it rains, he sees every raindrop as Damon's face falling out of the sky. <laughs> oh no. So, oh, Stefan hallucinates Damon, and Damon hallucinates his buddy, what was it, Henry? Henry, Henry and... And kind of Lily. He's, Lily. He's not hallucinating Lily out of it, but it was in the... You know, in the stone. Was, yeah, there was Lily. Yeah. But um, with Henry, uh, I did some research and I forgot to mention that Henry was actually one of the tomb vampires mm -hmm. in season one. So Henry oh. was uh, killed, I think, by Alaric um, in the townhouse. Yes. So he's not actually alive anymore. Um, he was also in season two in a flashback with Catherine. Uh -huh. And uh, he was mentioned, I think, in season five again. So he, we were like, there's more to this character. And we were right. We just, I didn't think we had seen him yet. And I was completely wrong. So We thought there right. was a future with him, not that he was a past yeah. character. Right. Past character. Well, looky there. So, um, the gentleman, well, Damon comes out of this to realize what Stefan had to realize coming out of the stone, that Julian took over the vacant Mystic, Mystic Falls. It turned into a gigantic vampire biker bar. It is a gigantic vampire biker bar. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is insane. And conven plot convenience here, oh yeah, now they can't go after Julian because Julian has like a thousand groupies that are all vampires. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just... Mystic Falls is, is seems like it's gotten worse now, even, like, after the, the Traveler's incident. Yeah. It seems to have gone even further to shit. I mean, Matt and Bonnie are taking them out, you know, bit by bit as quick, you know, as efficiently as they can. But really not gonna make a dent two vampires at a time. No. No. Hmm. Until they get a big hit and they get one that matters to Julian. Yeah, and yeah. cause Julian to do something utterly stupid. 
But Julian did mention, um... Yeah, because at one point, Stefan is driving Damon around, talking to him. And turns out, no, he wasn't. He was just talking to himself. <laughs> and, you know, Julian knocks him out when he comes to, basically says, you get your brother under control, or I'm going to kill one of you and feed you to the other. Or, and feed him to the other one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta know, is there one road out of Mystic Falls? <laughs> just, just one road? It's, it's like, it's kind of like Storybrooke. There's only one road out of Storybrooke. <laughs> it's like all these, you know, shows with the supernatural element. There's only it's, one road. It's, yeah, it's the same road. It's always the same road. It's like it certainly road. seems that way. Yeah. It really does. So, like, what is the rest of Mystic Falls? It's just like, there's an, I, is, is there, it Is there a beach in Mystic Falls? Surrounded by woods. It is... A lake, yeah, a woods. pond, I, but yeah, but is it like you know surrounded three sixty by forest except for that little road that goes in? Is it's that the only break like. in the woods? That's that's what I mean. That's the way they it's portrayed. <laughs> it's just like mm. it's like the only road out of town. Both cats are being cute. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> we got we got shoveling going on behind us, so we're distracted too. I was gone for three days. They're doing everything for my attention right now. Like, look at me! We missed you. <laughs> Pet me now, die. <clears throat> and she's gone already. <laughs> um, back to the plot. Anyway, um, Caroline's baby shower. Because in all of this craziness, we got Stefan and Damon coming out of a virtual hell. Um. Essentially. It wasn't a conventional um, baby shower because it was meant for guys. Well, there were guys present. Yeah, no, it, was... it was meant for a lark, so there were guys invited. Whereas most baby showers, it's like All girls only. Would, would he sexist? No, I'm just saying that's what it's mostly like. No, she's right. Well, do you really want to go to a, like a baby shower? I have never yes. been to a baby shower, and <laughs> I want to go to one just to see what all the fuss is about. I would love to go to one. I'd, I'd be so entertaining. Can you cupcakes. imagine me there? There's cupcakes. I would juggle the cupcakes. There's cupcakes and little teeny tiny booties, and baby bottles. <laughs> Not the Not kind of booties. The... <laughs> uh, socks, Dom. Like little tiny baby socks. Gotcha. Yeah. Onesies. There's lots of onesies. There are lots of onesies. Do all the girls dress up in the onesies? No. Oh. Why do I want to go to a baby shower then? But it was an. <laughs> Do you really want to see grandmas and aunts dressed up in onesies? Oh, I didn't know they go. Did they go? It's not just girls like it's, wet and wild. Dom, and Dom, you're thinking of a. <laughs> I want to go to that. You're thinking of a bachelorette party. Oh. Yeah. You were ten I feet away from. Too. You were ten feet away from one on Friday. I was. Yeah, you could have joined it. They probably would have let you. Hey. Man, Side note, his yeah. uncle and I were constantly telling him, you know, the odds. I was telling him the odds. His uncle was saying, get the fuck over there. They're like nine women. I'm like, look, statistically, one or more of them is single. There is minimum of one single woman at that table, and all of them are a minimum of eight out of ten. Go talk to one. And they're depressed because one of them's getting married. And exactly. Not. Exactly. Dom, you had the perfect moment. That's why a lot of people get laid, single people get laid at weddings, because they feel like shit. You blew it, Dom. You had your chance on your birthday. <laughs> I, had, I had guests with me, um, so I couldn't exactly not go home that night. True. We wouldn't have minded. <laughs> anyway. Um, Nora just barged into the party, though, right? Nora and Tyler, he didn't barge in, but he did barge into his house. Yeah, I barged into it. Really? <laughs> that, was, that was Tyler. Yeah, barging in with his poop uh, face. Tyler. Okay, got it. He did not poop face this episode, and I'm very sad about it. Are you yeah, kidding? His face is face. always a poop face. It yeah. always is, but he didn't really bring it out, you know. Maybe when he. This is my house. Maybe when Damon was leading them around and stuff. Yeah. But um, I agree with Alaric. They are never babysitting. Matt strangled the baby, and Tyler ripped its head off. Yeah. Now we yeah. know it. Oh, they, uh, don't, they're both single. Yeah. <laughs> Although we do find out in the flashback that Matt had somebody special, but lost her. 
The flash forward. The flash forward. Yeah. yeah. Flash forward. That, that's an he amazing said, well, he said I had family and then and a girlfriend. So, like, and and we're going to get to that, which uh, very shortly. We'll do okay. the whole. We'll do the whole flash forward at the end of this. Okay. Um, okay. So Alaric, Caroline finds a piece of paper. It's, uh, Alaric is interested in moving very far away to go raise the twins. Which, yeah. think about it. Would you blame him? No. No, I totally agree with Alaric. Yeah, get the hell away from that supernatural attack tracting town and its nearby college. And you raise your kids somewhere where that shit isn't gonna, you know, be going on 24-7. Just don't go to New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, avoid New Orleans, too. <laughs> Just don't go there. Yeah, it's like the two the two nexuses of uh, supernatural activity. Mystic Falls, mm-hmm. Virginia, New Orleans, Louisiana. Don't go there. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Um... And, um... I don't know. I was trying to be clever and think of the name of the place from Twilight, and I can't. Because I don't uh, actually... I just got bad chills. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Begins with an F. thought it was something falls, too. Wait, I know where it is. It's I don't give a fuck. Let's talk about <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> anyway. They should, they should move there. Let's talk about how Damon coerced, you know, convinced... Tyler to take him to see Elena's body because he needs it. Needs it. He needs to see it. And, uh, well, that goes pretty well until, you know... Now, see, here's my whole thing going into that. I'm like, okay, Tyler took him to a dummy place. This isn't... This is a coffin, but it's not Elena's coffin. That was my thinking, because especially when Tyler, you know, reached behind... Around grabbed, I would, what I'm assuming was. He a did trip. what? <laughs> he reached around <laughs> the <laughs> container, the shipping what? container. He didn't reach around. Because it's your fanfic you fantasy. <laughs> Case closed. When he moves, he ducks behind one of the shipping containers and pulls out what I can assume was a vervain dart and fails miserably and gets his head bashed into the baby. Which. It looked like Damon kind of cracked his skull on the pavement. And as far as I know, Tyler is not a vampire anymore. No. Well, he could be a werewolf. He, I thought he, he is, is still a werewolf. <laughs> well, no. No, that all got undone when he got pulled over. In, the... in Terrible oh, Season of the Travelers. Yeah, I remember. And we don't know if he, he ever reacted. He was reduced react- to just a normal kid with the werewolf gene. Yes. And we don't know but if he ever reactivated it. Yeah, doesn't mean that he couldn't have triggered it while he was away. True. But um, he's but out. We know that we know werewolves have accelerated healing, so. So he's out cold, and Damon is hallucinating, hey, hero Henry, in um, the happy little coffin that should be a Can, we, can we just call him that wrestler, Triple H? And we're going to call him Triple H. Hey, Hero Henry. Um, in a fit of get the fuck out of that, that coffin, Damon sets it on fire. Remembering what Stefan had said, that Stefan tried to set Damon's body on fire due to his constant hallucinations. So Damon's probably like, oh, you know, I'm going to fuck this, I'm going to set this on fire. And then he realizes... Well, fire, for Stefan, fire is the opposite of water, so... Yeah. Good point. And then when, you know, Triple H decides to walk behind him, <laughs> Damon realizes... You can't picture anything but the wrestler Triple H now. This is terrible. I know. When Triple H walked behind him... Now, Damon... He the camera and gave him the pedigree. ...watches <laughs> Elena's body burn. Which, I now have some questions. Light him up, 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 okay. light him up. Oh. Two questions. First question, wasn't it mentioned at some point that Elena's body would be magically protected? Yes. Yes. So I am under the impression that that fire did nothing other than torture Damon. From what I understand, the casket was magically sealed and couldn't even be opened. Yes. That is another thing. Yeah. Second thing, we did see in the flash forward when Stefan went... This was like the second or third episode of the season. When Stefan woke up Damon, he said, look, I just want to, you know sleep for the next hundred years next to my girlfriend here. 
I was reading an article today about, I was, you know, while preparing for this, I was just rereading a recap of the show. And in that, they Mm -hmm. show evidence that we were, and I didn't go back to watch this episode, but they said it was clearly Elena that he was sleeping next to. And I'm trying to remember, did they actually show it 100%? No, they didn't show her. There's just another casket there. So, I mean, if Elena's body really was burned, this could conceivably be some other girlfriend who happens to be a vampire and is asleep. Hmm. Or happens to be in a coffin. No. Do you think Damon would be able to connect himself to somebody in that short amount of time? Like that? He talked about Elena. He talked about it being Elena. Yeah, he, yeah, you're right. He talked about it. So, I'm going to go with the he really didn't burn Elena's body. That it's, no, it's just a hell torture thing. Yeah. It's just more of the torture. So he's still in the stone. Or it's just the post-stone hallucinations yeah, that Stefan was going through. Or it's him still in the stone. It could be either or. We don't know. Um, yeah. So the last bit, and I almost forgot about this. I was all ready to go on to the next episode. Matt gets mm-hmm. pulled over by a lady cop. <clears throat> yeah. And... Matt was a little tipsy. Yeah, he was. I mean, do you blame him? Look what he did to that baby. Yeah, exactly. So Matt totally gets arrested while well, taken in um, by a lady cop who mentions, you know, like, what was it? A gas fire or like a, an underground yeah, like, fire? A, yeah. yeah, mining mining fire. Yeah, that they... Yeah. They can burn for, like, years and years and years. Yeah, this one in Pennsylvania is still burning. Exactly. Um, it's like 40, 40 years or something. Mm-hmm. Like, but I can't believe they didn't call in FEMA or ask for any other assistance and all that other stuff. Like, and I'm thinking, well, okay, so that's the story that stuck for the outside world. It was a mining, you know, fire, and it's still burning. All right, then. That's not what actually happened. No. Oh, and by the way, can you explain what the fuck all this is? Bag of, you know vampire and monster hunting tools. Well, we know that Matt has connections with some sort of organization that takes vampires because they took Enzo, which we've completely forgotten about. But yeah, we haven't seen him in... A couple episodes um, now. So I have a feeling that he's really going to get into it with this girl, and that's the girlfriend he was talking about. I was thinking that too. That, that, that they put like too much emphasis on her for this not to be... A flyby. Right. Yeah. And did we even get this woman's name? This cop lady? I didn't care enough to listen. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't care enough no, to listen it. either. Right. I just have to look this up because I'm reading something here <clears throat> in the um, synopsis for next episode. And I guess we can cover that. Is there anything else you guys want to mention for this episode? The, the flash forward. Right. The flash forward. Yeah. To which we get, you know, this is where we left off last with Damon strapped to a chair and him hallucinating Mommy. Which, if that's still left over from being in the Phoenix Stone, holy shit, that's going to suck. But, uh... He's doing it for the next three years. Yes. But Matt shows up and frees Caroline and is basically like, has, you know, is holding a gun to her and is basically like, just get out of here, you know. We wanted Stefan. We want. We didn't want you. So, Stefan did something bad. Stefan did something really bad. Yeah, and so, yeah. I'm going to go with. He Can gets he something to do with the kids. I don't know. It may, but I mean, um, the huntress Reyna was name dropped this episode. She was mm-hmm. saying that the Phoenix Stone and the sword were handcrafted for her. Right. And she is some really terrifying, unstoppable vampire hunter. So, do you think she has some connection to Jeremy? It's possible. Well, that it's yeah, kind of along the same lines. She's well, just like that. an actual hunter, hunter. Like, yeah, he, yeah. The markings and the tattoos and all that. Yeah. Could be. It's possible. She's just super primal about it. Well, maybe it's... they could have like alpha, like super, like different ones. I mean, if I mean, wouldn't it be even interesting? I mean, if she. Because they obviously this whole like uh, weapon thing and the little the little X's this has been going on for quite a while. Oh yeah. So Ages. is it 
Maybe she's immortal? Maybe she's a vampire vampire hunter. Yeah, or something like that. Same, like, like, not, like, not like, you know, Michael or a lark where, but like... Yeah. She's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to... Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but um, definitely involved with the group that took Enzo. No, my question is, say. if Caroline was bound and gagged with rope and duct tape in a closet... How could she not free herself out? She's a fucking vampire. For vain? It, yeah, it had to be something. Can't be is she? Bad. Is she a vampire still? I think so. I mean, it's, it's possible like, something crazy happened. And I think there is even that. You're right. Maybe the baby's being in her as a vampire cured her kind of thing. I mean, they are the... Now only... you're going into heroes territory. Yeah, well, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. No, but that that does make sense. Like maybe the babies like siphoned the magic since they are from the well, um the, the Gemini, Gemini coven, and they, which they siphon, yeah. can have heretic. You know. Yeah. That's that's where some you know Kai was from. That. Um, They're also the only two Gemini's still alive. Right. So they are the most powerful at this point. Right. So it is possible that. They cured mummy, Caroline. It's possible. Yeah, so, and either they cured her or absorbed, maybe they Mm -hmm. turned into vampire babies, I don't know. I hope we're not getting another hope thing coming along here. Oh, I know. (laughs) I mean, it's plausible, though. I mean, mean, there's numerous things that could happen. I mean, they obviously when we saw the, the, the twins in the, the flashback, you know, flash forward, excuse me, they didn't seem like that, but I guess, you know, we didn't see them for very long. No. Um, heretics, very, yeah. heretics out of the womb? I don't, well, yeah, possible. Uh, I don't know. I'm really still trying to, like, I'm still trying to piece together. I mean, obviously we still have a, lot, a few more episodes. How Alarg and Caroline become into a relationship? <laughs> How do they become it, They're kind of setting it up already. They are a little bit, but it's just—it's just right now. It's still a little awkward. But I guess you know, it, it first, is awkward, always awkward because she's super hormonal and she's pregnant and she's obsessive. She's compulsive. She's all of those things. So like, she is doing kind of relationship stuff where she's like, "Why are you moving without telling me?" Kind of thing. Even yeah, though she doesn't like, want to be she's involved. Like, oh no, no, I'm not going to be involved. But that look on her face, like, she, yeah, she, she wants clearly to wanted to be involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mommy instincts have all taken control. So I so, think it's more of she wants to follow the babies and be with them, and then something developed with her and Alark afterwards. Yeah. Right. Well, no. I do say that it seems like there was a moment. There's a moment. They had a moment. They had a moment. They, were, like, they might have more other. of a moment. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so on to the next episode synopsis here. Um, next episode is called Postcards from the Edge. Uh... Looks like it's going to be fun. When his experience in the Phoenix Zone leads him to do the unthinkable, Damon finds himself without a care in the world, again, spiraling out of control and under the influence of a dangerous and reckless Julian. Oh, fun. Again. Refusing to give up on his brother, Stefan attempts to reason with Damon only to uncover the devastating reason for his descent. Again. Yeah, this was in the actual, you know, TV promo. It's like, it's like, what did you do? He's like, I killed Elena, and the next thing you see is Stefan beating Damon into fucking nothingness. Huh. Which looks like fun. Um, elsewhere, strange. Caroline begins having some dangerous side effects as a result of her supernatural pregnancy and is forced to turn to Valerie for help. Might hmm. be the road to her getting cured, because I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Meanwhile, Bonnie, Nora, and Mary Louise... Oh, good. Attempt to track down a ruthless vampire hunter named Reyna after they suspect that she has reemerged. Mm. Maybe we get to see her pretty face. Mm-hmm. She has a pretty face. I don't know. She looks like Elena. I didn't say Elena wasn't pretty. I just said I hate her guts. You hate her guts? Here, I'll fuck. Fi- you also said she was hot. I, well, she's on fire. I said. No, I said, <laughs> no, I said she was on fire. You said she was hot. And then you know there's her. There's her pretty face. For the three of you watching. 
So. From a distance, I could see the Elena resemblance. Uh -huh. I don't know. Anyway, um, that would be next week, which mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be fun. Yep. Is there anything else for this week? Nope. Should I cue the outro? Yep. <laughs> yeah, all right. But and by the way, that twi the Twilight City is called as Forks. Thank you. Forks. And on that Forks. note, Kim. <laughs> That's such a funny word. Kim, Forks. where can they find you? At H U F F I T Y P U F F I T Y. <laughs> Thank you and bless you. Dom, <laughs> where can they find you? Um, down here. That's enough, though. <laughs> It's P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M. -E -E yup, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24. L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. You can find me here at Philodrin on Twitter. You can find all of us on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Gmail, Google+, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can follow us there for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Um, Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye. Latest. Bye. I'm gonna make a Twilight fan fiction and everybody lives in the town of Spoons. <laughs> <laughs>